I remember what an absolutely beautiful day it was. This is Diane DeFontis, a survivor of the 9-11 attacks at the World Trade Center. The sky was this beautiful blue. There were very few clouds. She is the first person that day to arrive at her job in a law firm on the 89th floor of the North Tower. She gets out from one of the 100 elevators, looks out the window, appreciating the view, and went right to her desk. Then all of a sudden, this bang. The bang and being thrown out of my chair and having the the door partially open, it like all happened at the same time. The conference room is a few feet from her and she hears this lowly sound. The ceiling fell down and hit the table and cracked the conference room table. She gets very confused. Wow, how the heck did they get a bomb up this high? Because what else could it be? She tries to get her things together, but suddenly people from the office across come with blackened faces and a lot of dirt on their clothes. They said a plane hit the building. We watched it. We saw it hit the building and our office exploded. I said, oh my God. She can't believe it and tries to make a phone call to one of her closest friends. And I asked her, turn on the TV and let me know what's happening. Uh, If this indeed was an aircraft... uh, And she said when they showed the building on TV, she said she was trying to count the floors to see where it hit, but she just couldn't do it. Here is when Diane realizes and gets back to herself. I told her, listen... I know that I'm going to make it, but just in case, just in case I don't, give your daughter a big kiss for me, I love you, and that I'm thinking of you, and I'm going to get out of here. Because part of me wanted to say that, because I wanted to believe it. Suddenly, the door opens wide. All I remember is that yellow helmet, a flashlight, and... Him standing at the front door and saying, we have to go now. The man is Pablo Ortiz, a former U.S. Navy SEAL who worked as a construction superintendent with the Port Authority. After he and three colleagues, including Frank DiMartini, felt the explosion from one floor below, they grabbed tools and headed up the stairs. Their mission was to free those who were trapped by removing impediments such as jammed doors and fallen debris. He has them all together and they ran directly down the hallway where there was only one exit door available. They start going down the stairs, but one of the scariest moments for Diane is about to happen. I don't remember what floor we were on, but water started coming down the stairs, and it was like a waterfall. And I'm saying, oh, God, this feels disgusting. Because I'm wearing sneakers, I've got long pants on, my pants are getting soaked and they're getting dirty, and my feet are, like, squishing, which is a feeling I really hate. Trying to hold on to the banister so I don't fall. And there were people, like, huddled together because it was dark. And then Tirsa took out her keychain, and it had a little light on it. And I said, oh, wow, I have a flashlight in my pocketbook. Suddenly the worst moment arrived. The other building went down. I actually started to cry when we're almost out of the building. We're almost downstairs to the main floor. I'm standing in this little place, and I'm by myself. And I don't know if I should run upstairs or run downstairs. And when she started to lose faith in a possible exit, someone who was above me said, come up this way, come this way. And I ran up the flight of stairs to meet him. I I didn't want to go upstairs because, you know, my heart's telling me that if you're going upstairs, you're going up and you're further away from the exit. When I walked through that exit to the outside, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. She is in the middle of the epicenter of the attack, and the only way she can survive was to run as fast as possible from there. And I realized what a mess I was when I finally saw myself, because when I walked past a store and I turned around and I looked, my hair was white, my pants were black to the knee, my face was covered with ash. I didn't recognize myself. Diane is one of the few survivors of what became a dark day for history when 2,997 people died. 
We honor and remember the people, like Pablo, who gave their lives to save others. We thank the 9-11 Memorial and Museum for publishing these testimonies online. You can listen to more stories on 911memorial.org. This podcast was produced and mixed by Renzo Esposito. And I was your narrator, Jennifer Jufre. Thanks for listening.